Good morning, my dear friends. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to the studios of the Evangelist Ministry. From the studios of the Evangelist Ministry, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and His saving grace. Our vision is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the topic of this morning is rebuking worldliness. Let's open the Bible. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4 to the 14. The Bible said this way, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is enemy of God. Do you think that the scriptures said in vain the spirit that dwell in us lost it to envy? But he gave more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but give grace unto the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the light of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And speak no evil, one of another, brother. He that is speak evil of his brother, and judge his brother, and speak evil of the law, and judge the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a door of the, of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judge another? Go to now. You that say today or tomorrow we will go into a such a city and continue there a year. And buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the tomorrow. For what is your life? It is an even a vapor that appear for a little time and then banish it away. Thank you, Lord. My dear friends, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Talking about rebuking worldliness. It's a subject that you not really listen to often. But I tell you the truth. I had been preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as a good remedy for all your problems. For all your insights, trouble or any tribulations. The truth of the fact that remedy for a man's ruin. Many times in the highways where I just to work day by day, I had the opportunity to witness the good Lord. Once, many years ago, I noticed a young woman and I stepped over and talked to her closely. We started a good conversation and I asked her, what about your soul? Have you ever thought of preparing yourself for eternity? That was my question to this lady. And she replied, my soul, 
I have none. In one sarcastic way, accompanied by a foolish laugh, she replied, my soul, I have none. In one sarcastic way. My dear friends, I thought at the moment that my conversation seemed to make no impression at all. <coughs> my dear friends, but moments later she said, <coughs> oh well, of course, I don't intend to live like this way right along my life. I will get religion when I grow old because I have no time for the moment. That's what she told me. It's time to have fun. That's what, he, that's what she told me. But I tell you, my fellow friends, so the devil has deceived millions of people. But keep in mind, that you might never grow old. Keep in mind that you might not have time to prepare yourself for eternity. But you might find time to die at any moment. I was, I was told she has abandoned herself to a grossly wicked life. And all that made me sad, make me feel disappointed how sin the great people Hardened and blind people. But my dear friends, I have the opportunity to talk to this lady about the gospel. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, in the, uh, in the text that we just read in verse 4 said, You adulterous people, do you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whosoever wish to be a friend of the world, makes himself an enemy of God, according to verse 4. But my dear friend, but after all, I warned her of coming judgment. I talked to this woman very, very straight, my dear friend. I warned her of coming judgment, and she exclaimed, you're not going to scare me into religion. I said, listen, I don't come in here to offer your religion, I came here to talk about your soul and salvation. She replied, she was born to have fun. I am in for, for a good time. But I replied again, but when you have had your day, when you, your so-called good time is over forever, when death, judgment, and eternity have to be faced, when, when God has to be met. What then? You must face the fact of hell. Yes, my dear friends, you and I, we have appointment with, with death. And this is an appointment that you're never going to fail. Remember, God has to be met. What then? You must face the fact of hell. If not in this life, then certainly in the next. But let's face the fact Life is short, then it is for sure, and judgment is certain. Then hell is real, and heaven can be used forever and ever. These are the facts that you must face one day. You must face the fact that life is short. Let's remember in, the, in, in verse 14 in the text that we read, James said, whereas you know, not what shall be tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Do you understand, my dear friends? Heaven can be yours forever and ever. This is the other fact that you must face one day. You, more, you must face the fact that death is certainly waiting for us. We don't know when. We don't know what time. That's why James, in the book of James said, <clears throat> whereas you know, not what shall be on tomorrow, but what is your life? It is even a vapor that appearing for a little time and then vanish it away. My dear friend, which means my fellow friends, life is just like a vapor. It appeared today 
when vanish it away. Then vanish it away. And the book of Psalms is saying, for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The book of Psalm 90 verse 9. Which means, my fellow believers, these Psalms portray life as a story told it so soon and a story that just beginning and suddenly ending. Who can be sure for tomorrow, my friend? You raise your hand right there where you are. Who is sure about tomorrow? It is true, my friend. Who can be sure about tomorrow? Tomorrow can be hell or heaven. But it's up to you in this moment. If you don't know Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, today, today is the day of salvation. Today, right where you are, you can accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. My dear friends, tomorrow can be hell or heaven, but it's all up to you. In this very moment, you have to make your decision. Heaven or hell, then you must face the fact that death is for sure. And the book of Hebrews said, and is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. Hebrew 9.27. Death will not discriminate anybody. So the young or the old, the wise or the simple, the beautiful and the rich or the poor. Death will not discriminate anybody, my friends. <clears throat> yes, my dear friends. You must face <clears throat> the fact that after death, Judgment come. Keep that in mind that you must face the fact that after death, judgment come. In the book of Hebrews 9, 27 to the 28 said, make it clear. Just as a man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment. Jesus Christ was sacrificed once to take away sins of many people. And he will appear for a second time, not to bear sins, my friends, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. <laughs> are we waiting for him? Or are you hoping for delays? Fact is clear, my brothers in Christ, that men fear death. Why fear death? Because the honesty of their soul will not let them to forget that they have to face God and they might die one minute to another. But uh, my dear friend, because the honesty of their soul will not let them to forget that they have to face God and they might be in heaven or hell. That's why men fear death. My dear friend, I remember times so long ago when I was a very, very sick person. And I remember that I never heard the gospel. I never heard about salvation. But one day alone, I thought about if there is heaven, if there is hell, which way I'm going? Yes, 28 years ago, I thought about that without now about heaven or hell. But my dear friend, fact is clear, my brothers in Christ, that men fear death. Why? Because the honesty of their soul will not let them to forget that they have to face God. And they might be earn heaven or hell. That why men fear death. If there was not God as a judge, death would not bring the fear. If thus to you so. If we do what we want to do, we have to face what we did. Yes, my friend, we will face consequences of everything we've done in this world, today or tomorrow, on when we reach eternity. But my dear friend, <clears throat> but they are a good news. I don't want you to take this, this, this message as a bad news, but there is a good news and simple Good news, my friends, if we open the Bible and we read the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 13, said, 
for whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. So simple to earn heaven, my dear friends. So simple to earn heaven. It said, for whoever, for whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Which means, my fellow believers, the Bible said that when you call right in this moment, right where you are, and you call the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Believe me, the Bible said that if you, this, if, if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord is the Lord Jesus and shall believe in, in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For which the heart man believe unto righteousness and, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But the scripture said, Whosoever believe in him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10, verse 9 to 11. <clears throat> but my fellow believers, my fellow friends, eternity is there. Is there any concept more awesome? Or my very simple cannot grasp the idea of endless existence. Because that is not the end. It's just the beginning of a new, a new life. Many people without Jesus Christ are destined for a lost eternity. And one word means hell. The question is, do you know where you are when you die? If you don't know where you're going when you die, today is the day to accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. <clears throat> my dear friends, listen to this carefully, my fellow friends. When the Bible speaks about eternal life, it refers to our relationship with God. You see, when you go to heaven, my dear friends, it's because you have a good relationship with God. And the only way you can get a, a good relationship with God is accepting Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. That's the only way you're going to have a good relationship with God. Listen to this carefully, my fellow friends. When the Bible is speak about eternal life, it's referred to a relationship with God, not merely the passing of time. In John saying, and this is life eternal, that they might not be the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. 